Welcome to How to Save Your Marriage with Nicola Beer, a full show of tips and practical strategies to repair, rebuild, and strengthen your relationship. If you are currently stuck, wondering if your marriage can be saved, or you know you want to save it but don't know how to go about changing it, this show is for you. To book your free marriage strategy session with Nicola, get the free marriage ebook or donate. If you are enjoying the show and want to help keep it flowing, visit www.nicolabeer.com. Hi and welcome. So happy you're here. This is a bit of a different podcast today because I'm actually going to be talking about how to end a relationship with a narcissist or a toxic relationship where it's really harming you, where you know that you really need to leave or want to leave, and yet you're scared, you're frightened, you don't know what to do, and you want to leave in a peaceful way for yourself and for any children. Now, whilst this is a marriage-saving podcast, I don't believe that people should stay in relationships where they are being abused, whether it's emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically, where it is ruining their life and or where children are suffering. And so I decided that I'm just going to give a few steps to make things as peaceful as possible. Whilst I don't really like labels, as you know, then you know this narcissist lady, but borderline personality when all these different kinds of labels that we can give people. If we look on the internet, I had a conversation with someone this week. He said, Nicola, I looked at this extreme anxiety. And when he read it, he ticked most of the boxes. But then when he started sharing it with a lot of friends, a lot of friends were saying, well, we all have this extreme anxiety at the moment. So sometimes these labels can make things worse. I think it's a little bit like going to Google to to Google your symptoms if you're not feeling very well. For sure you're going to find out that you've got some life threatening illness or it's uh, you know incurable or something really negative. So that's why I don't really believe in focusing too much on the labels. It's more about what are the behaviors we need to deal with when making a relationship work with a narcissist or when making a relationship not work. So those are the kind of things that can come up. It can be very difficult to end a relationship with someone who is controlling because they will lose their power and security and they may try to manipulate you because they don't want to lose that power and security. And that's why sometimes it can be really helpful to have some support to leave a difficult relationship. Alarmingly, statistics show that it takes a person seven attempts to leave an abusive relationship. Seven attempts. And this is because when someone fears their partner is leaving, they may use guilt, put downs or emotional blackmail to keep them. If you've decided to leave a narcissist or emotionally abusive partner, then I've written some steps below for how to end a relationship with a narcissist so that you can hopefully have a smooth, peaceful and least destructive exit, which is what I really, as I mentioned, focus on helping people to do and also helping them to create a new life, to rediscover who they are, what they want out of life and to make that happen. So the first thing, if you're leaving somebody who is going to make it difficult for you, then do not discuss your plans to leave. I would never advocate being sneaky or hiding things, but as with any abusive relationship, being with a narcissist means that you shouldn't disclose your intentions to leave until the day you leave. This is purely because you do not want to be manipulated into staying or fear that they will do something to prevent you from leaving or harm you. This is especially the case if children are involved. It's important that you send the children to their friends or family member so that they do not witness the outburst from your partner when you're leaving or when you're telling them that you're leaving. So making sure that you're protecting there and you're preparing. So the next really big point here in the preparation is making sure that you keep documents safe. Something that has come up for clients that I've worked with before is that their partner has hidden their passport when they inform them that they're leaving. 
This scared my client into staying and their relationship became more and more volatile. And then later in a heated argument, he ripped up her passport completely and they were living, they were expats, they were living in a different country, making her difficult for her to even leave the country. By removing your personal documents from the house before you tell your partner about your intentions to leave may work well and stop you from being dragged into that situation. In worst case scenarios where you cannot access documents like your passport beforehand, do not risk your life by staying. There are always alternative ways to retrieve documents. So whilst it's important to try and save your documents and keep them in a safe place where they can't be destroyed or kept to hold over you, you don't want to stay just because they've got your documents. And then there's finances. One of the biggest factors that keeps people in toxic relationships is a lack of funds. It's always a good idea in any abusive relationship to either over open up a private bank account and put some money in there each week or to agree that you're going to have some separate finances, keep money with a trusted friend, confide in families and friends that you need somewhere to keep money safe and make sure that you have enough money to start off if you can. Of course, if you don't have any finances, you don't have access to any finances, that doesn't mean stay where you are if you are being abused in your relationship because a lot of people do find that where there's a will, there's a way and sometimes the universe can open things and things can happen that can really support people if they make that step to stand up for themselves and love themselves and and leave because mental well-being comes at no cost. As I mentioned, I've seen so many cases where things really open up and friends and family offer things that they couldn't have imagined or a job comes up or they win some money, like amazing things I've seen happen. If you can, seek some professional help, get some support, have someone to talk to, have someone you can email. Whenever I work with somebody, I offer unlimited email support to me, unlimited WhatsApp support to me. And that's for any person that I work with because life doesn't happen in a one hour counseling session. Things happen. You may need advice. You may want to share some wins. You may want to share some fears. And having some professional support with someone that can help you 24 7 if you need it. Of course, I can't speak to everybody 24 7, but I'm there. Uh, are replying to emails at least within 24 to 48 hours. So having something like that is important. Also telling your your friends and your family can be helpful, having some support. People that are going to support you, of course, you want to make sure that no one's going to kind of inform them or go behind your back. That would be awful. And also to help you feel stronger. A lot of people feel very weak. They're not sure if they have the strength to stick up for themselves if they have the strength to be on their own company. Often I do a lot of meditations for people to say, you know, I'm comfortable in my own skin, I'm happy being who I am and what I am. The next is to cut all contact. So once you decide to leave, it's really important to have no contact because the other person will try probably to get into bringing you back. Now, of course, if you have children, you definitely want to make sure that the children are not going to be left out. So maybe it's worth thinking about who can act as a neutral, friendly, supportive bridge between the two of you. Because you can't just completely cut them out of the children's life unless they're being abusive to the children. Of course, children need to have a relationship with both parents. And if you don't have children, then I found that it helps most people to have a real clean break to block numbers, to block social media, maybe to have a bit of a break from social media and this can make them feel better. So finding that mutual friend, parent to support. If you have to use the legal channels, of course, the legal channels become more costly and I think divorce lawyers, family lawyers do an amazing job. There are a few who just want to get money out of you and they create more drama, they want you to go to the extremes, and this can just make the whole situation toxic. So finding a lawyer who doesn't want to waste all of your money, 
that wants you to make things as peaceful as possible is also really important. And if you feel that you're not getting that, if you feel that your lawyer is pushing you to be more extreme, more harsh than you feel is necessary, then get a second opinion. The next and really important step is being prepared for the outbursts. When a person who is manipulative, is a narcissist, is controlling, they may do everything to hurt you, to get a reaction. They may badmouth you, they may slander your name to your workplace, to your friends, to your family. They may make up lies and stories. They may go to the police and accuse you of things. They may accuse you of things through the separation or divorce process. And this can be really, really difficult. I'm working with a man at the moment and um, his wife got him banned from his work and his assistant also banned who was completely innocent. His assistant hadn't done anything. She made up lies that they were having an affair when they weren't and both of them lost their jobs. And he was a, had a really great position and you know, obviously he was really upset. And that was the second thing she did. The first time their relationship wasn't going well, she went to the, the police and reported him for attacking her. So it's really important to have a great support team, to try and make things as peaceful as possible, to get support if you need to, and you're going through these kind of things. I mean, it is really difficult if you're not prepared for what they're going to do and you're fearful of what could happen. Make sure that all of the contact, all of your communication is sometimes in front of a witness can, can really help. But this is where, as I mentioned, having support, friends, a professional if you can, family, seeing people that build you up. And one of the last things is to really find yourself. When you've been with a narcissist, it can be really difficult to know who you are. Often people lose themselves in the relationship. They've been spending years trying to make the other person happy. They don't know who they are. They don't know what they like. They don't know what they want for their future. They don't know what makes them happy. And this is about spending some time to enjoy themselves again, to make their life great, to creating a plan of where they want to go and who they want to be and taking like really great small steps towards it. And it can also be very beneficial in this finding yourself process to release the process. I do a lot of work with people to release what's happened. We talk about what's happened. We then focus on releasing it. We do some meditations and some therapy to get them stronger and to make sure that they're not bringing the mistrust, the fears, the insecurities, the jealousy, whatever they've been carrying into any new relationships and into their lives. Many people find that they're extremely anxious after or they have low self-esteem. Some are emotionally eating, emotionally drinking, suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, which I'm going to be talking about in another podcast coming up, like post-romantic stress disorder, how relationships can leave us with a lot of stress. And of course, they have so many benefits as well, but sometimes that Events can happen in relationships where we are stuck and how to release those stuck, painful events and be free. And I really believe in body work there because we can store things in the body. So I do a process where I help people to release any fears, stuck events that have been stored in the body through a process I do online, asking people to tune into their body where they're feeling any stress or tension seeing what is there, often memories come up, fears, painful events, things like that, and then going through a process to heal from them. If you'd like to find out more about that, then do reach out to me. In fact, if you are considering getting some support and you want to understand how I work, then you can go to my website or you can go to the links along with this show and you will find the link to book a free 30-minute session with me where we can discuss where you are now, what's coming up for you, where you want to be, what you want to be free of to help you move forward in a happy place. And if you're listening to this and you're really not sure 
whether to leave or not. A lot of the work I also do is helping people to gain that clarity, to understand what they would need to do for the relationship to be really great, what they would need to do if they decided to leave, what they need to do to work out what is best for them. You can't sometimes decide quickly. Sometimes we want to just know the answer and it's too difficult to make that decision because it's too conflicting. The the feelings that we're having are too conflicting. One day it's up, one day it's down, one day it's this, one day it's that. And if that's you taking that pressure off you and giving you steps and tools to know what is the right way forward. So whether you decide to stay in your relationship and work on it, whether you decide to leave, I hope this has been really insightful for some of the aspects to think about. I do have a Facebook group that I've created. We're now growing and growing every day, which I'm really excited about. It's a place where people post questions and other people offer their opinion and support. I'm doing a live every week where I answer questions that you have. You can ask me live different things that you're struggling with and I will give you my best support and opinion on the spot. And I also put some posts in there, some videos in there to really help you to have the best relationship you can have. Because relationships make up a lot of our life experience. And when relationships go well, everything tends to go well. And when relationships are suffering, when we're feeling stressed, tired, bored, concerned, arguing, bickering, it really makes our whole life seem awful. And lastly, I just want to say that I have created a new relationship video for you. For all my podcast listeners, it's a 43-minute video and it covers the three main steps that you can take to really changing and transforming your relationship. Do check it out. Again, the link will be on my website. It's also going to be along with these show notes. From my heart to yours, thank you so much for listening. Wishing you an amazing day ahead, amazing week ahead. Take care. Bye. Thank you for listening to How to Save Your Marriage with Nicola Beer. To book your free marriage strategy session today, you can visit www.nicolabeer.com where you can also get the free marriage fixing ebook, request a topic for the show and make a donation if the show has been of benefit to you and you want to help keep it going. We wish you an amazing love-filled day ahead.